In this video, I will introduce a um, concept for the description of graphs and also how it can be used to uh, describe some graphs we might be interested in. So uh, I have to start by some definition, some introduction. Uh, you can find them uh, on a document I will, I will provide. But uh, basically, we define the neighborhood of a node as uh, all the nodes that are connected to, to an original node. So the neighborhood of n are all the nodes connected to n by an edge. We define the degree of a node uh, u as the number of neighbors, so how many connections. Um, we also can define the successors and the predecessors of a node uh, in a directed network. So the successors of a node are the nodes that uh, if there is an edge from u to v, then uh, v is a successor of u. And the same thing for the predecessor. Uh, similarly, we can define the out degree and the in degree when, when you have, uh, again, a directed uh, network. Uh, then you can um, separate between those incoming edges and separate in, uh, out, outgoing edges to have the in degree and the out degree. Um, then we call the weight of an edge um, the, if there is a weight, so if there is a value. So for instance, in, uh, in transactions, uh, you might have some value in dollar or in Bitcoin, which can represent the weight of an edge. And the strength of a node is the sum of the weight of the outgoing edges. So I will uh, just show you some pictures to clarify this. So it's really important that you remember this name of node degree. So the degree is just the number of connections, right? So for instance here, the degree of this node is two, degree of this node is three, and so on and so forth. Um, in a directed network, you see that uh, this, uh, so this is the in degree. So for instance, this node has an in degree of two, but it has an out degree of only one, okay? Because it has two incoming edges and one outgoing edge. So uh, this one has three outgoing uh, edges and zero incoming edges. And uh, here is an illustration of the weighted degree, the strength, what I call the strength. So it's again very simple. Uh, if you have a node like this one, um, it has a degree of uh, three but um, it has a strength of 12 because it's 6 plus 5 plus 1. Okay, And this one has only one connection with a strength of 6. So the uh, strength of the node is also is 6. Okay, so very, very, uh, very simple. Um, so uh, now let's, uh, so after introducing these basic notions, we can start to introduce a real network description. And the first question is, uh, why, how can it be useful for us to, to, to describe a, a network with some specific tools? So the first uh, application is just to understand a graph. When you, if I give you a graph representing some, for instance, from, from some transaction between people in Bitcoin, uh, you want to know how many actors and uh, if there are many connections between actors, if they are strongly connected, these kind of things. So first, to describe a graph. The second kind of application is when you want to compare, compare graphs that are modeling related items. So for instance, you have, let's say, a network representing transaction in uh, Bitcoin and another one in uh, Ethereum. And you would like to know if these networks are similar or not. So you can use this network description to compare the two networks. Uh, another important and uh, interesting application is to compare networks taken at different points in time. So if I give you a network of uh, all the transactions in Bitcoin today and uh, the one of yesterday, you can compare them and see if there is some important difference that maybe you can then relate to some events uh, in the real world or, or whatever you, you're interested in. Um, and finally, um, the, the other application is to compare your graph with a random model. So random models are quite important uh, when, you, when you work with, uh, with network science, with analysis of networks, um, because when you observe something, uh, you don't know if it's, if it's um, expected in a in random case 
or if it's something ex exceptional. So that's why very often you, you need to compare with a random model. Um, so for instance, this can be used to check if the network is random itself, but more commonly is to, to, to analyze if a property is exceptional um, or if it will be the same in, in a similar uh, random network. So the most typical of the random network is the erdos uh, random graph um, that I will introduce. So several types of random graphs uh, exist, but here we'll only introduce the most simple of them, uh, which is called the erdos model, or just sometimes the random graph. And uh, it's basically defined as um, a graph which depends on two parameters, the number of nodes and the number of edges. Or alternatively, the number of nodes and the probability to observe an edge between any two pair of nodes. But let's skip with the simple one. What is the idea? Well, you just take n disconnected nodes and then you just uh, add L edge uniformly at random between them. And in this case, you just add uh, edge with a given probability between each pair of nodes. And uh, here you have some example of the graphs that you obtain if you do this uh, random generation. So you see that some nodes can be disconnected um, and uh, that you obtain something that looks like a, like a normal graph. So uh, also one property is that the degree distribution, but we will speak about that uh, later, uh, follows a Poisson uh, distribution, so kind of some bell-shaped uh, bell uh, curve. So the first thing you can do when you get a graph is to count the number of nodes and the number of edges. So we call the size the number of nodes, um, and we note it n usually. Uh, L is the number of edges, and uh, L max is the maximum number of uh, edges that you could um, observe in the graph, which is uh, computed as in an undirected network as n times n minus one divided by two. Okay, because each node can connect to each of the other nodes, but uh, since edge can be in both direction, uh, you have to divide by two to get a number of unique uh, undirected edges. Okay, in a directed network, it's just uh, n times n minus one. So just some examples of real-world networks that, are, that have been analyzed. Uh, so from, for some networks, for instance, from Wikipedia, where there are 2 million uh, nodes and 30 million edges. Um, you can also analyze small graphs like this one, which is uh, the, the brain network uh, of, of a worm, I think, um, with 280 nodes and 6,000 edges. Even if it's small, it's still uh, very interesting to, to study. It doesn't have to be to be big, but it can be uh, very large. Like for instance, this uh, Facebook graph with 1.4 billion uh, nodes and 400 billion uh, edges. Um, so the, the, the first uh, interesting uh, descriptor that you can use is the average degree or the density. So it's based on the same idea, is to count how many edges you have by node. Okay, so average degree, it's just the average of the degree of all the nodes. And the density is the number of edges that are present in the graph divided by the maximum number of edges that you could have in this graph, depending on its size. And we have defined just before how to compute this, this Lmax. So again, some examples on, on the networks. And you see that the average degree is here. So usually it's a relatively small value. For instance, in, the, in, a, in a road network, you have an average degree of 2.7. In an airport network, you have an average degree of 21. And in Facebook, for instance, in this data set, you have an average degree, so an average number of friends of 570. If you look at the density, you see that it's a very, very small value. So often it's not really convenient to manipulate this density, and it's more convenient to uh, interpret the average degree. Uh, but the density is also very often uh, mentioned in, the, in graph analysis. So uh, we now come to something that I already said a few words about, which is the degree distribution. 
So again, this is something very interesting uh, to see in a, in a network. So just a reminder about what is a distribution. Uh, so if you're not familiar with data sets, if you have done some math a long time ago and not, uh, not more recently, maybe you forgot that, but how to read this kind of distributions. Here you have the value of the observation and on the y-axis you have the number of observations or the probability to observe uh, this observation, uh, this, uh, this value. So um, a typical distribution in nature is the normal distribution. And this is typically what you observe for the, um, the, the height, how tall people uh, are uh, for humans, for instance, or for any animal, by the way, actually. Uh, and you typically have this kind of shape. So for instance, maybe the average human is one meter and 60, one meter 65, let's say. And uh, if you look at all the people in the world, they kind of have, have some uh, some they have some height which is about that value, about this value. So you have some people that are above two meters. You have some people who are maybe below one meter twenty, but they are relatively rare. And ninety percent of the population is in a very close uh, value from the average. So you can take this average, and for instance, you can design uh, a chair uh, which is fitting nearly all humans because we are all basically the same size uh, we are close to the average on the contrary uh, if you have what we will call a power law distribution you have something very different you will have uh, many individuals many times with very small values and you have uh, very few individuals with a very high value here okay so you have ex some exceptional values but you have few of them but you still have some of them and then the vast majority is uh, rather um, uh, close to the small values here and uh, this can for instance uh, uh, be um, represent the, the distribution of wealth uh, in in the world for instance so you have a vast majority of the population which is rather poor and then you have a few individuals which are extremely rich okay and if you take the average value so the average wealth of uh, of an average uh, person you're maybe around here or here and you see that this value actually does not is not frequent right it's not very common to have some individuals with this value so it means that um, it's not really meaningful to look at this average value. Uh, when you have a poor low distribution, uh, you have a very broad uh, range of values that you can find. This value is not an out outlayer because it's really part of the distribution. So it's not a uh, very, very large values are not outlayers. They are just something which is norm well, expected given the type of the distribution of what you've, you're observing. So in terms of networks, um, if you have a random network, the, the average the Ados Rini uh, random graph that I, that I introduced just before, uh, this is the distribution that you observe. Okay, so basically all nodes have the same degree, the same number of neighbors. But in real world, uh, in many, many cases, most cases, you will have some distribution like this. And you can understand it very easily if you think about uh, Twitter, for instance, or social networks in general. Um, you see that you very often have some very extremely popular individuals like uh, Barack Obama, so I cannot say Trump anymore because he's not on Twitter anymore, but uh, some, yeah, I don't know, stars, singers, actors, uh, these kind of politicians, these kind of people, they, are, they attract a lot of um, people who follow them on Twitter. And on the other side, you have the vast majority of people on Twitter that have only uh, 20, 50 or maybe uh, 80 um, followers, basically their friends. So uh, this is typical uh, of a distribution on a social network or in also in many cases of, uh, of network in the real world. Um, yes, yeah, so this is our, what I already said. Um, yeah, so, so we model this by a power law and 
the fact that we have a polar di distribution is important because it means there is no scale. As I said, you, 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 you must not look at the average degree and make uh, interpretation based on that because this average degree is not representative of most of your nodes. So how to recognize a power law? So the, the, the simple approximation that you can use in this class, because uh, it's not a class um, about, about this topic precisely, but it's that a power law looks like a line on a log-log plot. So what does this mean? So here you have the proper definition of the power law, uh, which is defined by an exponent. So you see that the, the probability to observe a given degree, degree k, uh, is actually uh, this degree um, to the power of an exponent minus alpha. And so you can vary this alpha to say if the distribution is more or less, uh, has a slope which is more or less, um, uh, yeah, if it's more or less sloppy. So I don't go into the details of the distribution, but what you can remember is that if you try to plot a power law distribution on a linear scale, so here it's linear and here it's linear, then you will get something which looks like this that you cannot actually uh, read. And so if you want to read a power law, you need to plot it on a log log scale. Okay, so here is logarithmic, here is logarithmic. Um, and you see that your distribution now looks like a line and the exponent, so this alpha, so sorry here it's gamma, but it's, uh, the two are possible. But, um, so this value, this exponent will tell you what is the slope. And actually this corresponds to the slope of the line on this plot. Okay. So remember that if you see a line on a log-log plot, you can say that it looks like a power law. And then if you need to really check, uh, you need to use some, some, some statistical tools to check uh, if it's, uh, it's um, really a polar distribution. Um, if you try to plot, for instance, a Poisson distribution on a log-log plot, this is what you get here. So you see that it's not at all a line, while the power law has clearly a shape of a line. What is important to remember is that uh, the power law has what is called a, a long tail. It means that you observe some values here, so much more to the right than for the Poisson distribution. So it means that you, you have some stars, you have some very large uh, values. They are rare, but they still exist. They are not, as, uh, impossi they are not impossible like in a Poisson distribution. Okay, so I finished for the, uh, this question of uh, degree distribution. So if you have any question, of course, you can ask me, uh, ask me later uh, by, uh, on Discord or, or in, uh, in audio. Um, so the next topic is subgraphs. So often when you have a graph, it's interesting to look uh, if this, this, um, this graph can be decomposed. So for instance, here you have an example of a single graph which has one, two, three, four disconnected component. Okay, so it's what we call here strongly connected component. So we have four connected component in this graph. So it's often useful to see if this graph, uh, if the graph is connected, there is a single one, or if there are several ones. So modern notions, so a subgraph is just a graph induced by uh, a given uh, set of nodes. So for instance, um, if you have this graph originally, you can choose to take these um, four nodes, okay, and say I want the end used subgraph. And so the end use, end use subgraph is composed of those four nodes and all the edges between them. So for instance, this is not an end used subgraph because it's composed of these four nodes, but not of this edge. It's, st it's still in blue. Uh, is still in black, sorry. So this is not an induced subgraph. The induced subgraph should contain all the edges between all the nodes that we have chosen. Just a few elements of vocabulary. We will call a clique a subgraph of density one. So it means if I have four nodes and they are all connected together, I will call this a clique. So a triangle is a clique of size three. Okay, so three nodes connected to each other. And uh, as I mentioned, the connected component is these um, 
these, these subgraphs which are connected but not connected to the rest of the graph. And the other one are four directed graphs, I will not talk about them. Another notion is the clustering coefficient. So this is also very important and can be understood in terms of social network. So in social network, we consider that triangles are very important uh, because we consider that um, uh, very often we can say that the friends of my friends are my friends. And this is observed in real life very often. And so in, the net, in, in a network, uh, it's interesting to check if you have a node A which is connected to a node B, a node B which is connected to a node C, then is it likely that uh, A and C are connected? So if it's uh, very often that you obtain these triangles when you have uh, three nodes which, which are connected by two edges, and if the third one exists, uh, then we will say that we have a high clustering coefficient. And uh, this is also called the triadic closure. But remember the clustering coefficients. So to compute this clustering coefficient, we can compute it first for a given node. So for a node, for instance, u, I will check uh, its neighbors. So here you see that this node is a neighbor, this node is a neighbor, this node is a neighbor, and this one is also a neighbor. And among those neighbors, I want to check how many triangles I have. So I just have to count how many edges I have between those uh, nodes. So, um, and how many of them are possible. So I compute the density of the neighborhood. So for example, for node U, uh, you see that I have one, two, three, four neighbors. So I know that the maximal number of edges that could exist between them is 4 times 3 divided by 2, as I explained before, so it's 6. In maximum, you can have 6 edges between those 4 nodes. Uh, but I count how many of them exist, do exist, and you see that there is one here and one here. The other one, they are between you and the nodes, but I'm just counting how many are between the neighbors. So there are two edges that exist out of 6. So the clustering coefficient here is one third. Okay? So if you have a high value, the maximum value is one, and it means that everyone is connected among the neighbors, and the minimum value is zero, it means that uh, none of my friends know each other, basically. So from this, I can compute a single value for the whole graphs. There are two ways to do it. Uh, one is to compute the average clustering coefficient. So I just compute the clustering coefficient for all of the nodes as I just explained, and then I take the average value for all the graph. The other way is to do the same kind of computation but for the gro global graph. So I count how many triangles I could have at maximum based on the number of uh, connection between nodes. And I count how many triangles are present. So how many triangles exist divided by the maximum number of triangles that could exist. So I don't go again in the technical details, but you get the idea counting how many triangles uh, exist compared with the maximum number of, of triangles that could exist. And uh, what is important to know, um, so it's, it's the first case in which you can compare the clustering coefficient. Uh, you, it's interesting to compare it between uh, your observed graph and um, a random network. So we know by definition, actually, we can prove that um, in random network, like the Erdos I presented before, the global clustering coefficient is equal to the density of the graph. So remember, the density is the number of edge divided by the, by the maximum number of edge that uh, could exist. And we know that, um, that uh, the, the clustering coefficient is equal to the density of the graph. And we have seen that this value is very small for lar large graphs. So if I Go back, I can show you here that if you remember, the density was very, very small for large graphs. Okay? You, it, and this is very common in. in, in yeah. Uh, so. Um, um, yeah, it's. Uh, so so this, this value is very small. And um, because of that, you have a very small clustering. Sorry. Uh, sorry, clustering coefficient. 
so um, the fact is that in uh, real graphs, the value is not uh, usually very small. So for instance, for Facebook, uh, you can get a value. So in this case, it's a Nego network, but uh, still it's a high value, 0 0.6. So the, uh, in, for Twitter, it can be 0 0.5. Uh, but in some networks, it can also be small. I don't remember. No, I don't have a table here. But so basically, uh, this clustering coefficient is um, very small in random network, and it's it's usually large in real graphs because you have this friend of my friend are my friend phenomenon. So this is something that you usually check to see if um, if a network is random or not. So let's move to a different uh, set of network uh, description, um, which are related to path. So what you can do in a, in a graph, in a network, is to, um, to, 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 to see how to go from one node to another. So there are different vocabularies. So a walk uh, is a sequence of adjacent uh, edge. So for instance, one, two, one, six, four, five is a valid walk. A path is a walk in which each node is distinct. So uh, you cannot repeat nodes. So we, are, we will be mostly interested in this class about path. Uh, the path length is just the number of edges encountered in a path. So for instance, uh, A, B, C is a path of length two. Okay, A, B, B, C. Uh, the weighted path length is the sum of the values on the weight. So, for instance, the, the, the path um, ABC has a weighted length of 4 plus 5 equals 9. And the shortest path is the, the path between the nodes which have a minimal path length. Uh, it's not necessarily unique. So for instance, um, if I want to go from A to D, you see that there are several possibilities. You, I, I can do A, B, C, E, D. I can do A, C, E, D. Or I could do A, B, D. So clearly the shortest path is to go through A, B, D. And this has, so the shortest path between A and D has a length of uh, two. And then there is the weighted uh, shortest path, which is the path of minimal weighted length. Okay, so in this case, you take into account the weights. So maybe to go from A to D, um, the weighted length is 14, 10 plus 4. But uh, if I take this uh, path, it will be 2 plus 3 plus 4, so it's only 9. So it's, uh, it, uh, this path has a shorter, shortest um, weighted path. Um, and a, a term of vocabulary we will call the distance between two nodes. Uh, the distance between nodes is the length of the shortest path. Okay? So if I say what is the distance between A and D in the graph, then the answer is 2 because there is a shortest path of length 2 between them. And the shortest, the, the distance between A and F is, so I have to find the shortest path. So in this case, it will probably be this one. And so it's one, two, three. So distance in the graph between A and F is three. From this notion of path, I can define what is the diameter. So the diameter of the graph is the maximum distance between any pair of nodes. So for instance, in this graph, I have to check, but probably the diameter. So you have to, to be careful that it's the longest, shortest path. So I have to find what are the, the two nodes which are the hardest to reach and take the shortest path between them. So in this case, uh, probably it's A and F. And the, sh the, the so the diameter of this graph will be one, two, three. OK. It's not 1, 2, 3, 4, because between A and F, there is the shortest path is 1, 2, 3. And, uh, yeah, and it's the longest uh, distance in this graph. So the diameter is 3 in this case. And then I can compute the average distance. So average distance is simply for all the pairs of nodes, 
uh, in the graph what is the average of the distance. So if this value is small, it means that I can reach nearly everyone in the graph in a few steps. So it's like, like uh, uh, everyone is connected to everyone easily. If the average distance is uh, long, then it means that um, it's hard to reach uh, other nodes in the graph. So uh, the average path length is famously known um, in, in English uh, by the, an expression which is the six degrees of separation. So, um, and this comes from an experiment been by, made by a sociologist called uh, Milgram. And um, yeah, and so I will just explain briefly what this experiment was. So the ID, so it was made in the 60s, so no social, no online social network at the time. And the goal was to see if uh, the global population of the United States, for, for instance, um, was it uh, strongly connected? So was it e simple to reach how many paths, how many hopes do you need to go from any individual to any other individual? So there was a debate about was it short or long uh, between maybe someone who is, I don't know, uh, a, 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 a poor uh, white guy in the West Coast and a rich uh, black guy in the East Coast. Um, what is the, is the distance very large, very long, or is it relatively short? So the, to answer this question, uh, he designed an experiment with uh, males, so uh, the, the, the old-time uh, old males, uh, where you have to, to, to use a post and to, to use um, a stamp and to post uh, your mail. And um, he asked, he gave some mails to some people, and then he said, uh, you have to send these mails to uh, this person, which lives in New York, and the name is this, but probably you don't know this person. So just try to send it to, uh, to it through your contacts. So uh, the person with this mail will try to target some, some, some friends that maybe live in New York, or maybe has some, so they, they, they had a few information about this individual. And so they could try to send it to someone who probably, who they thought uh, might know this person or might know someone who know this person uh, to, to see um, if they could reach, uh, they, they could send this mail to the final uh, destination. Um, and the result was that in average, uh, the mails had to go through six hops to arrive to the destination. So this was an argument for saying that the world is a small world. So that's where the, the, comes, the, the term comes from. So it's a small world. It means that uh, you can reach anyone uh, in a few steps. But um, what is interesting is that uh, this experiment was quite criticized. So some males, for instance, did not arrive. It was a small sample, uh, so there were a lot of criticism. And some, many, many people still believed that actually it was not uh, really representative and that in, in, in reality the, the, the average distance was much larger than that. But uh, recently, with the introduction of uh, online social networks like Facebook, Twitter, uh, MSN Messenger and, uh, and, and others, um, we, we had access actually uh, to, well, act actually the companies had access to these very large graphs uh, of relation between millions of, of people. And so uh, researchers have actually computed um, these real values on the world graph. And so they settled uh, the, the debate. And the result was that, for instance, in Facebook, uh, I don't remember the date of this, but it was a few years ago, uh, maybe four or five years ago. And they found that the average degree of separation was 3.6 approximately. So it means that actually it was much smaller than what Milgram had found. So of course, there are a lot of uh, criticism that you can do again on this experiment because uh, what does the Facebook friendship means? Also, there might be some biases because of uh, spammers or fake accounts. But still, basically, it seems that um, we are really living in a small world because uh, in only three and a half hops, you can reach nearly everyone in the world, basically. 
because they found that this is for the world, um, world and it was even smaller for the US or for a particular country. So we are very close uh, one from, from the others. So uh, I introduced this term of small world network and in the literature it's important. So when we, so we often talk about uh, a network being small world and what does it mean? So when we say that the network is small world, it usually means two things. The first is that the average distance must be short. So approximately the average distance must be in the logarithm of the number of nodes or smaller. And the other element is that the clustering coefficient must be high. So you have this effect of the friends of my friends are my friends. Because in a random graph, uh, the average distance is also very short, but the clustering coefficient is small. And you can also easily create a network with a high clustering coefficient. If you make a grid, for instance, so you connect a nodes, you make triangles, but in this case, you don't have a short average distance. So when you have these two elements, then you say that your graph is small world and most of real networks are actually small world. And I will finish this, this video with a presentation of an analysis, very basic analysis of a friendship network in, uh, of Facebook uh, made in 2011, just to show you the application that you can do of these basic network descriptors. Uh, to understand um, to understand networks. So I take this graph and I just count first the number of nodes. So there are 700 uh, million users, active users. There are 68 billion edges. So the average degree is 190. So an average number of friends at that time. Um, the median degree is 99, so you see that the median degree is quite different from the average degree. So if you have less than 190 uh, friends, it doesn't mean that you are not popular, it just means that the average degree is biased by some very large uh, degrees. The largest connected component uh, represents 99.91% of the network, so it means that there is a path between anyone in the network, basically, but a few exceptions that are probably fake accounts or just accounts that are created, but with no one using them. Um, you can look at the degree distribution. So here it's plotted on a log log scale and you see that it's not really uh, a line. So it's not really a power law. Some might argue that there are some points, some, some, some range of values where it's a line, like here, for instance, but it's dangerous probably to do this, uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, simplifications. You can also observe that at that time, the number of friends was limited to 5,000. So there is this uh, strong break uh, at this value. And so uh, it could be, well, to, to say more, you, know, you should use some statistical tests to see if it's, um, if it's a Poisson distribution or something else. Um, on this plot, you see, some, you see the, um, the average degree of nodes uh, depending on their degree. So how to read this? So um, it means that uh, on this line you have, uh, so this means that for all the nodes with a degree of 200, what is the, the, the degree of their neighbors? Okay, so when I say number of friends and when I say degree, it's the same thing. So if the network was, if all the nodes were equal, you would expect to have this horizontal line. You would expect uh, that the the, the, uh, someone with 100 friends or someone with 1,000 friends, you would expect their friends to have the same degree. Okay. If it was uh, associative or if people were really connected to people like them, you would expect to have this line. You would expect people with 200 friends to have to be connected to people with also 200 friends in average. And you would expect star with 1,000 friends to be connected with individuals that in average also has a degree of 1,000. 
And what you observe actually is this line. So what this tells you is that um, if you're among the normal, the majority of users, which are around here, uh, then the number of the average degree of your friends is higher than your own degree. So it means that your friends in average are more popular than you. Okay, so this is known as the friendship paradox and it's a well-known paradox. It's not due to Facebook, it also exists in any network in which you have an, an, uh, an heterogeneity of degrees, so power and law of degree distribution, for instance. And, um, and yeah, for, all, for most of the users, uh, if you comp compute the number or the degree of their neighbors, it's higher, the average degree of their neighbors is higher than their own degree. Okay, so this might explain sometimes why uh, people say that users on Facebook, that Facebook gives you the impression that everyone else is better than you. Well, this is one reason of this effect. Is if you look at the number of friends of your neighbors, you will see that they have more friends in average than you. So you might think that you're not popular. But actually, it's the same for, um, for, most, of the, uh, for, for most people. And it's, it's normal. It's just a network effect. Um, this chart on the, on the right on, uh, shows something which is complementary. It shows that you tend to be connected to people with a similar number of friends than you. And it's not contradictory with what I just said before. If you look at the black line, it's the distribution of degrees of friends for people with a degree of 10. So this is for people with 10 friends, and we see the distribution of the number of friends of their neighbors. And we observe that there is a, a strong peak around 10. If I, do, if I look at those with a degree of 100, we see that there is, again, a, a, a high peak around 100. And if I do it at 50, there is a peak at 50. So this means that, um, in average, uh, people tend to be connected with uh, other individuals with a similar number of friends than them. So, uh, in average, the, the, the average number is higher, but this is uh, due to being connected to some large degree nodes. But in, in average, uh, the, other, the friends are, I, I, I'm connected to, they tend to have a similar number of friends than me. You can do a similar observation about some properties, like age, for instance. So uh, this is the distribution of the uh, age uh, of my friends if I am uh, 20, 20 years old. So if I'm 20 years old, black line, I see that there is a peak at 20. It means that most of my friends are around 20 years old. And, um, and there are very few of my friends of age 40 or 60. If I'm 30 years old, then I observe that most of my friends are about 30 years old. Okay, so it means that it's called homophily, it's called um, assortativity, and it means that people tend to be connected to other people who are similar uh, to them in, in social media. So you see maybe an exception uh, at age 60. You see that uh, yes, I have a small peak at 60, but I still have large values with. Um, people of uh, smaller age, and this might be due probably to uh, to parents being connected with uh, uh, children. And finally, uh, we will discuss about that later in another class. But uh, this is an analysis of the number of friends, of how likely you 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 are to have friends um between people of different countries so each uh, line and and uh, each um, uh, row and a column correspond to a country like uh, i think there is fr here which is france there is uh, taiwan hong kong uh, thailand uh, i don't know uh, great britain and so on and so forth and you count uh, so if you have a a, a green value, very green value, it means that you have some high value. And this tells you, so you can observe that there are some kind of square, and this square will correspond to, for instance, um, countries in Europe being strongly connected. It means that I have uh, uh, someone from, um, so I don't remember how, uh, so it's a bit difficult to read here, but um, 
So people from France, for instance, they have a strong probability to be connected with someone from, so it's hard to read, but to, to, to Spain, for instance, or to Portugal, or yeah, to other um, neighbor, neighboring uh, country, for instance. And so you might find that there is a blog with, um, so for instance, I think this one is Latin America, this one is Europe, and you see that uh, here there is a node which is a little bit bit in the bo in both of them, and which is Spain. So uh, ob so you have this kind of blocks corresponding to groups of country which are um, more strongly which has more more friendship between them than other other countries. So we will discuss about that later in a, in a, in next class on community detection.